Thank you, uh, Professor Osler, for the introduction. Thank you all for coming. Um, before we get started, I just want to get a sense of my audience. Um, how many people here have purchased an organic product within the last week? Raise your hand. Okay, it's like about half. How about within the last year, how many have purchased an organic product? Okay, just about everybody in the room. We obviously have some selection bias here because you came to an, or an organic policy talk, but you're actually not that different from the American public in general because 84% of Americans report buying organic goods. That represents the incredible success of the organic movement. The organic movement has revolutionized how we think about food and agriculture in our lives. It has shifted the culture in how we think about food and farming. The organic industry has grown. The organic industry is now a $40 billion industry. $40 billion. And growing. However, as large as that number may sound, it actually represents only about 4% of the total food and beverage market. That means that 96% of our food is still being grown according to conventional industrial production. If we were generous and we sort of included in so-called natural products, uh, and there's certainly some sustainably grown food out there that is not certified organic officially, uh, you know, maybe we're looking at six or seven or eight or, or 10%. But that's still a relatively small percentage. And our goal, it's my goal, goal of organic activists, is not to create a system in which 10% of our food is grown sustainably. Our goal is 100%. We want to transform the industrial agriculture system. Now, we could be optimistic and say, hey, well, it was, it was much smaller before, and now it's 4%, and maybe it will grow and grow and grow. And, we'll, and that's, how we'll, we'll change, that's how we'll change the system, farm by farm. Go from 4% to 5% to 10% to 20%. Eventually, industrial agriculture will end. But we should be a little bit cautious about that perspective. Um, you know, it's as if saying, well, my daughter was 36 inches when she was three years old, and then when she was six, she was 48 inches tall, and therefore, by the time she's 21, she'll be nine feet tall. We can't necessarily expect that continuous, steady growth. It's quite possible, likely I would argue, that organic will remain something of a niche market. That it has peaked, or it will peak, and then it will level off. And again, our goal is to transform the entire industrial agriculture system. Not some small percentage, some small percentage that, that makes good food available, but to relatively few people who tend to be more affluent and more educated, although there is some distorted perceptions about it being elitist. Uh, organic food is consumed across the, the economic spectrum, but that's another story. The point is that we cannot rely upon this idea of continuous growth. It's not a reasonable assumption. If we are to transform the industrial agriculture system as a whole, we need to think carefully about the strategy that got us this far and about what we need to do to take it to the next level. In my research, I analyze that very question. How did we get here? What did the organic movement do? What was the strategy that got us to this point? Because they did make incredible gains. We have come a long way. You know, if you look back at how organic was perceived in the 1970s, there was a 1971 article in the New York Times that referred to it as a cult. Leaders, health leaders in universities and research centers, Harvard University, School of Public Policy, health representatives said that you know, going organic is like going back to the Stone Age. And Cornell University official said it was going to bring on malnutrition and mass starvation. The Secretary of Agriculture under Richard Nixon, Earl Butts, in 1972, said, sure, we can return to an organic 
methods of growing. We know how to do that. We've done that before. But first, we're going to have to decide which 50 million people we're going to let starve to death. That's how organic was perceived at that time. As a cult, as a harbinger of mass starvation. And today, organic is embraced by not just the American public, but by big agribusiness. You can find organic products in every supermarket in America, big box stores as well. The Secretary of Agriculture, the very person who in the 1970s, the person in that position in the 1970s who said it was going to bring on starvation, now oversees the National Organic Program, the federal government program overseeing organic. We have come a long, long, long way. And the, the leaders of the organic movement, the farmers, the people that made that happen, they are heroes. And I had the privilege of speaking with many of them in the course of my research, people that have been at this for decades. And they should be applauded for what they have accomplished uh, because they have really laid the groundwork for us to truly transform the industrial agriculture system. They raised consciousness. They created a, we, a real alternative, a viable alternative. They showed that it can be done. We can grow organically. We can grow enough food organically that we're not going to face mass starvation. Yet we still have this issue before us of actually implementing a transition away from the industrial agriculture system. How are we going to do that? That's what my research is about. That's what I'm going to talk about today. 